Hi guys and welcome to Bible Ways Advent series. Every day leading up to Christmas Day we're going to share a verse or a few verses from the Bible followed by a short explanation all to do with the birth of our Lord Jesus. Today's verse comes from James chapter 1 and verse 17 and it says every good gift and every perfect gift is from above coming down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Have a great day. Gifts. Everybody loves them. It's a massive part of Christmas. I know in my family, we'd spend most of December circling things in different catalogues, getting excited about all the things we could have at Christmas time. The problem is Christmas then becomes about all the things you haven't got, rather than things you have. Today's verse from James tells us that every good thing we have is from God. It's a gift from God and he's a loving father who wants to give us everything we need. 2020 has been a year where we've been denied stuff that previously we would have taken for granted. So this year, why not write a new list? Hi guys, today's verse is from Matthew chapter 1 verse 23 and there it says Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. So who is Emmanuel? From the context of Matthew chapter 1, we know that Emmanuel is Jesus. So Jesus had more than just one name. He was not just called Jesus, but he was also called Emmanuel and had other names. And Emmanuel means God with us. So God is not just someone who's out there, far away, but God is actually interested in us, deeply interested in us. And that is why he sent Jesus, his son, into this world to make a way so that we can be with God forever. If we put our trust in Jesus Christ as our saviour, Today's verse is from Micah 5 2. But you, Bethlehem, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for, for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. There are over 5,000 places in Ireland with the word Bally in it. This can make asking for directions quite difficult. Today's verse comes from the prophet Micah, who wrote nearly 700 years before the birth of the Lord Jesus and gave precise details of where he would be born. He didn't just say that Jesus would be born in Bethlehem, but he gave the precise one. The fact that Micah could prophesy that the ruler of all kingdoms and the everlasting one would be born in such a humble and lowly place only proves how accurate the Bible is and how we can trust it. Luke chapter 2 verses 1 to 7 In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. Hello everybody. Today's verses that we've read in Luke chapter 2 paint us a picture of what was happening at the time the Lord Jesus was born. The Roman army had come in and captured Israel, and now the Caesar at the time was trying to count everybody so that they could all pay taxes. These were the circumstances that caused Joseph and Mary to leave Nazareth, where they were living, and go to Bethlehem to be counted. We don't read an awful lot about the details of what happened, but it was there that the Lord Jesus was born. And here in these verses, the key thing that comes out to me is that verse at the end that says, they was laid in a manger because there was no place for him in the inn. God's son, and the first thing we read about him is that there's no place for him. I remember a chorus that we used to sing growing up. Uh, Today he is seeking a place in your heart. Will you still say to him, no room? 
Thanks everybody. Hello everyone, today I'm going to read to you from Luke chapter 2 verses 8 to 14. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. So just like the shepherds, I'm here in a field with sheep. So why did the angel speak about good news and great joy and a saviour or a rescuer? Well, we all need a saviour or a rescuer. Um, to rescue us from the state of sin that we're in. And the great news here, or the good news and the great joy is that Jesus had just been born. And he is the great saviour who can forgive us our sins and who can give us eternal life. And that is something that we should be really joyful about. And what is the result? We can have peace with God forever. And that is good news and really great joy. Today we're going to be reading from Luke chapter 2, starting at verse 15. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart, and the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. After the shepherds had heard the message from the angels, they went to find the Lord Jesus in a manger. When they arrived, they found the Lord Jesus, the creator of heaven and earth, lying in a wooden manger, an outcast with the animals. The question is, why did the creator of heaven and earth humble himself and lower himself so much that he would be born in a wooden manger and end his life on a wooden cross? Well, the answer is, is that he loves you and me. And this is something that the shepherds and Mary seem to grasp in this passage. As the shepherds leave, they go and rejoice and praise God. So the question is, do you know why Jesus came and do you know what it means for you? Now, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the spirit to the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up into his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. That was Luke 2. Verses 25 to 32. Thank you. These verses are about a man named Simeon. Now he was an old man and he had received a promise from God. A special message saying that he would not die before he saw the Christ. Now the Christ is not just Jesus' surname, but it's a title. And this is something that had been prophesied about hundreds of years before. That God would send someone, send a saviour. And Simeon, when he saw the child Jesus, said, Oh, finally, now I can die in peace, because I have seen the Saviour, the Saviour of the world. And he said that this Saviour was not just for the Jews, but for all people. And that's the Saviour who we talk about at Christmas. And it's amazing to think that Simeon knew this 
when he just saw a child. In fact, Jesus hadn't done anything yet. He was just a small child. And it's the same as the shepherds, the wise men. God had been working and people knew when they saw this child Jesus that this was the Son of God. This was the Christ and this would be the Saviour of the world. And this is who we talk about at Christmas time. So have a great one. Merry Christmas. Good morning, everyone. Today's reading is taken from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. Hey guys, I'm sure you've all seen the nativity scene before. But this is not just about a baby in a manger. This baby was born a king. This baby was Jesus. As we have read, he was born a king, which could not be said of any other person. This makes him special. Jesus was born a king and the wise man came to worship him. The wise man followed the star to see Jesus and worship him. It wasn't an easy journey. So what are you going to do to see Jesus and worship him? So next time you see a nativity scene, think about the king that was born, the savior, Jesus Christ. Hi everyone. It's another day of Advent and one more day closer to Christmas. But let's just take a few moments to think about the Lord Jesus. We're going to read a passage from the Bible that talks about the Lord Jesus as a young boy. We can find it in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, and verses 41 to 51. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover, and when he was 12 years old, they went up according to custom. And when the feast was ended, as they were returning, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents did not know it, but supposing him to be in the group, they went a day's journey. But then they began to search for him among their relatives and acquaintances, and when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to search for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when his parents saw, their, saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been searching for you in great distress. And he said to them, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? And they did not understand the saying that he spoke to them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was submissive to them. And his mother treasured up all these things in her heart. Wallet, phone, hat, keys, hat, ready to go. Mask. It's easy to forget things, especially in today's new normal. And today's passage, we read about a time when Mary and Joseph forgot about the Lord Jesus. But before we criticise Mary and Joseph for going a whole day without being in contact with the Lord Jesus, how easy is it for us to go day after day without ever being in contact with him? When was the last time you prayed and you read the Bible? Maybe you're more like Mary and Joseph than you want to admit. You're going about your day and yet you're missing Jesus. Hi everyone. Our verse for today is Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 2. And it says, And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Hi everybody. Today's verse comes from the book of Isaiah. Isaiah was a prophet who lived some 600 years before Jesus was born. And here he's prophesying about the Messiah, the fact that he would come from the line of the great King David. 
in the verse that we've read, it talks about how the Holy Spirit would remain upon him and that certain characteristics would mark out his life. It talks here about the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. If we move over to the New Testament and read through the Gospels, we can find all the things that the Lord Jesus did in his life. And we see how these characteristics indeed were seen in his life in wonderful ways. The ways that he healed people, the ways that he spoke with people and interacted uh, with many different kinds of people. These characteristics were indeed true of him. Written 600 years before he was born. Okay, today's verse is Isaiah 9 verse 2. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. Are you only seeing a black screen? Well, don't worry, you're only supposed to see a black screen. And you do, because I'm sitting in my house and it's pitch black. There is no light. You know, if there was no light, nothing would survive. If there was no sun, we would all die. And morally, that's exactly the same thing. The Bible tells us that we're all sinners. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. So what do we need? We need light. And that is why Jesus came, because Jesus is the, this great light that we've just read about. He came here so that we can have life. So if we put our trust in him, if we believe in him, then he will give us life, eternal life. And that means that we can be with him forever. Hello, campers. Today's verses are from John chapter 1, verses 1 to 8, and they say, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light, that all might believe through Him. He was not the light but came to bear witness about the light. These verses confirm to us that the Lord Jesus did not only come into existence when he was born on this earth. He was actually there in the beginning and the creation of all things. In fact, if we look back in Genesis chapter 1, God says, let us make man in our own image. His appearance here was to fulfill God's purpose of love and to show how much he loved us by sending his son to come to this earth. I hope that as you read these verses today that you will be encouraged to find out more about this one who is the light of the world and you will let him be the light of your life. Today's verse is taken from John chapter 1 verses 9 through 13. The true light which gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So in today's passage, we can see that Christ is the true light, and by his spirit and grace, he enlightens everyone who's enlightened to salvation. Christ was in the world when he's talking of human nature. He was in the world, but he wasn't of it. He came to save a lost world because it was a world of his own making, but the world didn't know him. Now, when he comes as a judge, all the world will know him. Now, many people today will say that they're Christ's own, but they don't receive him because they won't part with their sins, nor do they want him to reign over them? But all of the children of God are born again. And this new birth is through the word of God as the means and by the spirit of God as the author. Now, some people may boast of being born of aristocratic or even royal blood. But the people referred to in this passage who received Christ when he came, they were born of God. And the will of the flesh could never have produced this change because the flesh is altogether opposed to God and the will of man, not even the best of men, 
could have produced it. It's wholly beyond man's powers. Their birth was of God as a divine act, and the one who they received in faith gave them the right to do so. So have another read of the passage, folks. Have another read. Uh, it's well worth your time. John chapter 1, verses 9 to 13. If you want to know why we celebrate Christmas, you only need to look at this verse. In fact, you only need to look at the eight words in the verse. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. The Word is the Lord Jesus, the creator of heaven and earth. And he didn't just appear on earth, he came and spent significant time here. Christmas is a time when we celebrate that God became man and dwelt among us. Lord Jesus looked down on this earth and saw all the sin and rebellion and yet chose to come to this earth, not to judge it, but to save it. And that's what Christmas is all about. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. John chapter 1 verse 14 Hi everyone, today's verse is taken from John chapter 12, it's verse 46. Jesus is speaking and he says, I have come as a light into the world, that whoever believes on me shall not walk in darkness. 2020 has been a dark year for many of us for many reasons. And yet as the literal darkness closes in around us as we come to the end of the year, are we really willing to admit that it's not the darkness around us that's the problem, but it's the darkness that lives within our hearts? The Bible calls this darkness sin, the darkness that stops us having a relationship with God and feeling empty and lost inside. Many times in the Gospels, Jesus referred to himself as the light of the world. He was the one that came to free us from spiritual darkness, from the bondage and slavery of sin, and that's why we celebrate the Lord Jesus at Christmas. Hello everyone. The scripture reading today is taken from the first book of the Bible, Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. Good morning. Here in the third chapter of the first book of the Bible, we have the first reference to the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, which was announced by God himself. We read that there was enmity between the serpent and its offspring, and Eve and her offspring. So we have the first prophetic mention of the great deliverer and his victory. We can see here clearly the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus, the saviour of the world. This would remind us of the well-known verse in John's Gospel, chapter 3 and verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave the, his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. We have the promise of the birth of the Lord Jesus, who died on the cross for our sins. He has promised to come again for those who believe. There are many today who can testify that he is a wonderful saviour. Can you? Hi everyone. Today's verse is from Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honour, that he, by the grace of God, might taste death for everyone. Hi everyone. Today's verse is Hebrews 2, verse 9. And it's a wonderful verse because it tells us God's entire plan. The Lord Jesus was born here upon this earth. He came lower than the angels, as it describes it here in this verse. And the question is, why? When we think about him being born in a manger, we enjoy thinking about that. But why? Why did he come? Why did the angels sing at his birth? He came here to die, not for himself, for everybody, as our verse tells us, because of the grace of God. But also, this verse tells us that now he is crowned with glory and honour. For him, death was not the end. And the verse talks about seeing him, really recognising him as in that position. That's our privilege now. What place do you give the Lord Jesus? 
Today we're reading John 3, 16 to 21. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people love the darkness rather than the light, because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light, and does not come to the light, lest his works should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. Hi guys, a friend of mine has got this verse John 3.16 on his registration plate on his car. And a few weeks ago he went to a building site and there were a few people who had lunch in front of his car. So they took their phones and they checked what that meant. And then he came back to his car and they asked him and said, Why have you got John 3.16 on your registration plate? What is that all about? And then he told them. It's about God sending his son Jesus Christ into this world. Why? Well, Jesus came here to save you and me. He did not come to judge us. He did not come to just say, well, you haven't done what God wanted you to do, so you have to die. No, he came to reach out to you and me. And that's why he went to the cross. That's why he allowed man to crucify him. So that he would take the judgment on himself that you and I deserved. So that we can be saved and so that you and I can have peace with God. Hi everyone, today's verse comes from Galatians chapter 4. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his Son, born of woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. Hi everybody, this is Al here. We've just read a fantastic verse, but the start of that verse can sound a little bit confusing. It says, when the fullness of the time has come. Now, I don't normally use that kind of language, but if you were to write that maybe today, you would probably use expressions like, that's it, time's up, that's enough. And really, that's what God is saying here. He had tested his people over hundreds of years and given them a set of laws to keep, and none of them have been able to keep them. None of them have been able to keep his standards. And the time came when God had to say, that's enough. There has to be another solution. And I think if you and I are honest with ourselves and examine our hearts and think of all the times when we've really tried to do good and try and do what God wants us to do, we'll all admit, as the Bible says, that um, we haven't managed to meet God's standards. And actually, all of us have to come to that same conclusion that that's it, that's enough, there has to be another solution. And that other solution was found in the Lord Jesus, the baby that we often think of at this time of the year, the Son of God, the one that God sent to be the answer, to be the solution. And he went to Calvary's cross to die for us so that he could become that sacrifice for sin and that he could take our sins away if we only come and trust him. And what's more than that, but God then offers not only to forgive us from our sins, but to bring us into relationship with him, to make us his sons. And that's amazing. You might think the son of a king is an amazing privilege. But this is far more than that. It's to be a son of God. That's a wonderful privilege and it's something which is available to each and every one of us today. Today we're reading from Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. These verses talk about a child being born. Now we obviously know that child is Jesus, but when it was written, it was hundreds of years before Jesus was even born. How could they have known who it was about? In fact, when it was written, it was written as a promise, a promise from God to the people. When we look at the story of the Bible, we see in the beginning God creating humans for a relationship. We see God creating humans to rule over the earth and to care for the earth, being in a relationship with God. But we see humans going their own way, choosing to rule on their own terms without God, breaking that relationship with him. Then, as we go through the Bible, 
we see character after character, time after time, a hope that maybe this person is the one who would bring humans back into the relationship with God. Was it Moses? Is it Joseph? Is it David? But here we see in these verses someone coming from the line of David, the child, the son of that King David, who had not been able to live up to it, who was the mighty God, everlasting father, the prince of peace, the child that would be born, that child, Jesus. And that is who we talk about at Christmas. Hi guys, I hope you're having a really good day and I hope you're really looking forward to Christmas as well. Our verse today comes from the Old Testament. It's Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 18. And it says, Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are like crimson, they shall become like wool. Have a good day. This claims to remove most stains. But however hard you scrub, it's hard to get rid of everything. And that can be a problem, especially when you eat like me. Today's verse compares our sins to scarlet and crimson stains and promises that they can be washed clean as wool and as white as snow. You may have guessed already that we at Bible Way are excited about Christmas. We're excited that the Lord Jesus came. But you know, Christmas is not exciting news if you think you're good enough by yourself, if you think you're clean enough on your own. Christmas is good news for those of us who know we don't meet up to God's standards, that we need to be cleaned, that we need to be washed, that we need to be made as white as snow. And that's why Christmas is good news, because Jesus came and took our sins so that we could be made right in God's sight. Today's verses are coming from the book of Philippians, and we're going to be reading chapter 2, verses 5 to 11. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Today's verses from the book of Philippians remind us of the Lord Jesus' humility, how humble he was. At Christmas time, we think about the Lord Jesus coming into this world. And although perhaps sometimes we might think about the angels singing and uh, the star in the sky and these grand things, at the heart of it was God becoming man, becoming a little baby in Bethlehem's manger. But these verses tell us just how much further he would humble himself, even to a death on a cross. That's how far he went in his humility. But yet it doesn't end there. It tells us that there's more to the story, that he's been raised again, that God has exalted him, given him a name which is above every name. Perhaps we may not see it right now, but these verses tell us that actually all of us will see it. Every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Hi everyone, hope you're all doing okay. Today's verse is 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 6. And it says, For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. In the beginning of the Bible, we read that God spoke and there was light. And in today's verse, we read that the same God who spoke and created everything has also shone a light into our hearts. We've said it many times in these series that one of the most amazing things about Christmas is it shows us that the creator of heaven and earth cares for us. The wonder of Christmas is that God is revealed to us as not just some impersonal creative force, but that as someone who wants to 
form a relationship with us. He wants to come right into our hearts, into our lives. At Christmas, we see that the creator of heaven and earth came to this earth, was born of a virgin and laid in a manger and went on to give his life at Calvary's cross. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 15. Thanks be to God for his inexpressible gift. Almighty and eternal Father God, you are so great and good. Thank you so much for being the most cheerful giver ever. Thank you for every good and perfect gift that comes from you. Thank you for not sparing your son Jesus but giving him up for us all. Thank you for sending him, not to judge us, but to save us. Thank you for eternal life that we have through faith in Jesus. Thank you so much for this inexpressible gift, your son Jesus. Thank you that nothing can separate us from his love now. Thank you for the meaning, hope and assurance that we have in Jesus. Thank you for everything that you have done, that you do and that you will do. Amen.